Well, contrary to uh, popular controversy, the uh, USA and uh, Jamaica often get along very well. Romeo and I have known each other for a couple of years now, and we, uh, we see eye to eye on many issues of development and coaching. Um, we are here with, is it Michael or is it Mikhail? It's uh, Mikhail. 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 But you Shamas. can say Michael. I can say Michael. Or Mick. Or Mick. I'll say Mick. Mick. Okay, Mick's easy enough. Shamas. I'm here with Mick Shamas, um, the CEO for the Boston 13th. Um, and Oneida. And Oneida FC. Um, one of, this year. of course, Boston joined the, the, the USA scene about two years ago, was it? Yep, that's correct. And w what has it been like for you um, as a young entrepreneur um, developing a, a rugby league team in, in America? Tell us about that experience. Uh, well, to say the truth, actually, it's been fantastic. Uh, I think that the American uh, market is, is plush and very receptive uh, for the sport of rugby league football. And, um, and you know, it's, it's, it's very akin to, to what they all love. I mean, if you can want to compare it to, to soccer, it's everything that it wants to be. It's fast-paced, dynamic, uh, huge hits, and uh, high scoring. So uh, the American market takes it very well, and um, and you know it's definitely a good product to put out into that uh, that market. And on top of it all, you know, I think that uh, with the development efforts that we've got in place, you know, we're going to see some uh, some critical uh, uh, milestones reached over the next uh, few months and even few years. So you know, we've got to look at it as a strategic. Uh, uh, dynamic process, but uh, but it's getting there, you know. What would you say has been lacking um, concerning the game in the USA? Because rugby league has been there for over a decade, right? It's, mm -hmm. it's been there for quite a few years, but however, it um it has not really exploded the way many persons in the rugby league world have anticipated that it would. What do you think was lacking and, and, and what do you think you guys can do to, um, to, to get it moving at a faster pace? Well, I think now that, uh, you know, with, with the launch of the, uh, the USARL and this equitable management structure that we've, we've put in place as of January this year, I think that the future is bright. Um, but one of the biggest uh, hurdles and obstacles that we have to understand and appreciate in the American market is that the size and scope of operations is, is massive. I mean, it's unlike anything else. When you look at, let's say, the European Federal Federation helps facilitate individual nations around all of the Northern Hemisphere and around Europe. Um, America alone is that same scope and size of operations. You've got to, uh, you know, really appreciate that. So when you look at Jamaica or Canada or even, you know, Latvia or, or, or Lebanon or, or any of the nations around Europe, each one of those nations represents, let's say, a state or maybe a region in America. So by compartmentalizing these kind of developmental hubs, we'll be able to effectively reach our, our, our market demographics properly and, and hopefully you know, get forward on the right foot as of 2011. So this marks you know, year one of a new strategy that we're implementing, and I know that there are gonna be some definitive uh, benefits uh, you know, reaping and, and dividends uh, rewarded. But uh, we're looking forward to, um, to October, the, uh, the forthcoming uh, World Cup qualifiers, you know, USA, Jamaica and South Africa. So I should spin this one around to, to, to you, Romeo, and say, how do you feel that uh, you guys have been preparing for that? Well, for, for us, um, it's going to be an interesting journey. Um, you know, we are the inexperienced ones here. Um, you know, we have seen that even with a combination of UK-based uh, professionals and semi-pros along with the amateur players from Jamaica, we have seen that um, we can still be beaten. Mm -hmm. the, America, the Americans have beaten us, you guys have beaten us twice. And so I'm sure that you guys are right now the heavy favourites, really. Um, South Africa is a dark horse, you know, we're not sure what they will bring to the table. Yeah, the South African um, rhino squad. Right, you know, Steen is very confident that, you know, um, his boys with their heavy rugby union background and skills, that they, 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 be, they will be able to do very well in the competition. So I think it's going to be very interesting for us. Um, our ultimate aim is to qualify, however, I think the experience is what matters. I think mm -hmm. um, putting our best foot forward um, is the most important thing. And um, I think we're going to have a fantastic time, um, you know, hopefully, um, you know, we can sort out, you know, the venue soon, the location and, and solidify all that information and not wait too long. Um, Mick, tell me something, in terms of the youth game in America, it, that has basically existed on a small scale. Do you think America, America can become a successful rugby league nation without having a youth program, without the sport being in high schools perhaps, or, or even um, 
Are you off the clubs? No, no. And, and that's a simple answer is that no. Um, I think the core of any developmental strategy for the, any sport, but specifically about rugby league as we're involved in, has to be the focus upon that uh, that youth demographic because that way people can grow. You take the example of uh, the MLS, Major League Soccer in America, it has a targeted focus upon um, the youth projects and that has grown and developed and helped benchmark you know soccer as the fifth major sport throughout America you know obviously you know competing with the big four um, but rugby league definitely has to focus on that as well now how to poignantly execute such a strategy and, and penetrate those 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 little market niches specifically the youth will 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 be a, an interesting point of, uh, of discussion over the next month and two months uh, I know on that on the 9th of April when we get back to America we've got the next USARL uh, board meeting uh, that's the United States of America Rugby League um, board meeting and we're going to be discussing some of these uh, points very very considerably uh, and while we're looking at first of all you know uh, launching these strategies for this year, we've got to look at the scope of operations extending over this five years, this ten years. You know, you can't just expect results to happen in the next week, two weeks, month, even with a prodigy, you know, such as yourself, Romeo, you know that these things happen over time and we've got to make sure that we develop them right so that we can imbue the right set of skills, both on the field and off the field, into the youth so that they can grow into it and advance the level of proficiency and performance within our, uh, our uh, representative uh, nations. Um, tell me about the, 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 the split um, in, in American Rugby League right now. Do you think, do you think um, the game will grow more rapidly since there are now two organizations who are pushing um, Rugby League in different frontiers? I mean, when we, when we look at the forums, you know, the, the fans across the world who often comment on the activities around the world, a lot of them do believe that um, the split is a good thing because what it means is that there are now two groups who are really pushing the frontiers. Do you agree with that view and, and um, do, you think, um, do you think the two groups will eventually, um, I don't know if I should say, come together or have a, uh, a unified front? Because we do, we do want to see players from both competitions competing for the Tomahawks. We do want to see the sport exploding in America. Mm -hmm. So what's your, what's your thoughts on that, I if mean, you wish to say? I'd, I'd, I'd like to say that America is def definitively a big market that uh, that rugby league has to expand within. You know, it's only through through that market can can the sport actually uh, succeed on a on a truly global scale. But what's happening in America with the split is ironically something that's very similar to um, to, to to what's been witnessed in other sports or, or the sports you know histories throughout America. You could look at the, the American football or gridiron. You can look at um, uh, baseball, uh, even basketball and ice hockey. You know, a, a lot of these big four sports have seen a split. And the good thing about America is you're looking at a free market. You're looking at free market economics, and within that context, it's survival of the fittest. So one of two things will happen. Either the two down the road are going to find a mutual ground, of which we've already discussed and, and, have, and have presented in, in public press releases that we've agreed that we have a common ground to working toward the benefit uh, of the development of rugby league football throughout America. So we'll either find that mutual ground and we can both work together completely amicably, or it will be survival of the fittest and the best product will ev eventually come out at the end, which will inevitably help the development of rugby league. So either way you look at it, it's going to work. And, you know, and, and I'm no prophet, you know, I wouldn't be able to say, you know, this is going to happen or that is going to happen, but we can, uh, we can definitely uh, know that something good is going to come out of it. Um, tell us, when will the Boston... 13s um, come down to Jamaica and um, experience some good jerk chicken and jerk pork and some good red striped beer. Uh, we have not had an American team visit Jamaica and I think we have had Jamaica visit the USA at least on at least three occasions. Um, tell us Mick as a CEO of one of the better clubs in, in, in the, uh, the USARL, when will the Boston 13s visit Jamaica? Is, is this an official invitation? Definitely. Then let's do it. Well, Let's organize this and let's get them down there. And that's on tape. You heard it from the man himself, the CEO of the Boston 13th, Mick Sharmas. Mick, thank you very much. Thank for you your very time. much. Thank you very much. Cheers.
there you have it. Um, so the Boston 13s um, CEO Mick Sharm was giving us some very insightful um, comments on the state of rugby league in the USA and, and also on the, 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 the route um, to developing the sport more in the country. And of course um, he has given us his word that the Boston 13s will be down in Kingston eating some jerk chicken and jerk pork, drinking some red striped beer and playing some rugby league soon. Out.